Nicholas, thank you so much for joining us today on what is a very busy day, but also a very busy week. You are our flight director for the New Shepard 20th mission, but you also have a very impressive background. Could you tell us a little bit about how you came to Blue? Yeah, absolutely, Jackie. I'm an engineer by training, but uh, I joined NASA as an astronaut in the late 1990s and uh, flew on two space shuttle missions to help construct the International Space Station. Um, including doing three spacewalks on the second mission. Wow. Um, that was a lot of fun. I did that for about 15 Safe years. Safe to say, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, and then I decided that what I really wanted to do uh, for the next step in my career was come and take that knowledge, the lessons I'd learned at NASA, and help build a road to space here at Blue Origin. That's amazing. And we're so lucky that you chose Blue and came to join us. You're the flight director, as mm -hmm. we mentioned, for New Shepard missions. What does that role entail, especially this week? <clears throat> Well, the flight director's job is a busy one, as you can imagine, uh, running the launch crew from about three days before launch until the day after. But the primary focus of the flight director, in fact, the primary focus of the entire launch team is the safety of people, the safety of our astronauts, the safety of our ground crew, and the safety of the, the public. Um, so the flight director is running mission control on launch day, um, setting the tone for communications, um, helping uh, keep things moving towards a launch. And when we encounter minor problems, we have to figure out what to do with them. Uh, do we have a procedure we can run? Or is it something we need to take to the engineering team so that they can evaluate um, any minor issue? And of course, we're always keeping uh, at least one eye on the weather, right. which uh, around here is interesting. Yeah. Um, we, we have beautiful skies, but sometimes we have winds and Winds are the reason we had to move the launch two days to the right. How do you as flight director and your team assess weather conditions for launch? Well, we pay a lot of attention to weather. In fact, we have a professional meteorologist on the team, a former Air Force meteorologist. Wow, what a job. So we have great support. <laughs> I know he enjoys the job. Um, we're looking at the normal things you'd look for in weather, precipitation uh, and so on, clouds and thunderstorms. Um, we're also looking very carefully at the winds. We have to launch this vehicle from the surface uh, so we worry about surface winds. We then worry about high altitude winds, essentially the jet stream, because this vehicle is going all the way up through the jet stream out of the atmosphere. And then we worry again about surface winds for the landing of the booster, the landing of the capsule, and the recovery of both vehicles later on in the day. So we're paying very close attention to winds. Tell us how we're looking in terms of the vehicle. Well, the vehicle's in great shape, Jackie. We had the flight readiness review on Sunday, that's a standard thing we do a few days before launch, to make sure that all the procedures that get the vehicle ready for launch have been completed uh, or are on track to be finished before launch time. The crew capsule is in great shape. Uh, by now, the uh, crew equipment, the seats and harnesses, for example, have been adjust adjusted to the individual sizes of our six astronauts. Uh, the booster is in great shape. The vehicles are mated and uh, right now the vehicle's upright in the barn uh, waiting for the few last steps before rollout. Well, we've talked about the weather readiness, we've talked about the vehicle readiness, but how is our crew looking? What's their status in astronaut training? The crew is doing really well. Uh, Steve Lanius, the other flight director, and I had lunch with them yesterday over at the Astronaut Training Center. They were in good spirits. They were, I think, halfway through their training at that point. They've finished it now, of course. Um, and they are looking forward to the flight. Uh, they are apparently doing well in their training. They've awesome. been certified as ready to fly now. Um, and they, it was really fun to meet them too. They're an interesting group of people. And of course, one of them is our very own Gary Lai, who was one of the original architects of the New Shepard system. And it's great to see him get a chance to fly on the vehicle that he had such a big part in designing. All of us at Team Blue are extra excited yeah. for Gary Lai. All right, Nicholas, tell us a little bit about how the launch windows differ here for our New Shepard missions versus something like a space shuttle mission. They're, they're quite different, Jackie. Um, when we were flying the space shuttle, we had to launch within a very narrow window in order to dock with the space station that was flying overhead at 17,500 miles an hour. You can imagine if you're going to dock with the space station you really only have a couple of minutes either side of the nominal launch time. And if you wait much longer than that, the space station's gone. Well, here at Blue Origin, we're flying a suborbital vehicle that doesn't have to dock with anything. So our launch window can be much longer. And in fact, that window is typically defined by sunrise in the morning and then by uh, temperatures becoming, uh, say, too hot in the desert uh, mid-morning or afternoon or perhaps uh, the GPS satellite constellation availability or something else like that. But our windows are typically um, a, a couple of hours long. 
Got it. So another difference between the New Shepard mission and, say, a space shuttle mission are our approaches to hold when we're mm -hmm. in the countdown clock. How does holding differ? Tell us a little bit about that. Holding is quite different here at Blue Origin. At NASA, uh, we traditionally used holds uh, during, say, the shuttle launch to allow the non-computer controlled um, parts of the launch preparation to be done without the clock running. So we would halt the clock, the sequence of automated events in the launch countdown, um, to do things like load astronauts. And then we could let that happen without the clock ticking um, safely and, and, then, and then restart the clock and, and count down the remaining time to launch. Because the choice to use launch uh, holds is not driven by the physics of launching, like, for example, the launch window is, we were able to choose a different approach at Blue. We tried out this approach of having no holds, of building additional time into the procedure while the clock is running so that people who don't have a task can wait while others who have a task can continue to run it to the clock. Um, that, we think, has worked quite well. It's been helpful in some ways. We do have the ability to call holds whenever we need them, for example, to wait for winds uh, to improve or for clouds to move out of the range. Um, we also, of course, uh, encourage anybody on the launch team to call a hold whenever they have a safety issue that they'd like to raise, and that hold then gives us time to really examine it in depth, to address it, and decide whether we're good to proceed, whether we need to change a procedure a bit, or whether we're going to scrub. So, Nicholas, what should we expect in terms of order of operations on launch day? Well, Jackie, the first shift arrives around midnight on the day of launch. They get the vehicle ready for rollout, roll it out to the pad, and then the second shift comes in about four hours later, and we make the decision about whether or not to load propellant. Um, that happens about three hours before launch. At about 45 minutes before launch, the flight director will do a go poll to find out whether we're ready for astronaut load. And assuming we are, uh, we'll start loading astronauts then. About uh, T minus 12 to 15 minutes when the astronauts are safely loaded and the hatch is closed, the crew capsule will go escape enabled. And then at T minus 10, we'll do another go poll for terminal count. After that, it's a straightforward 10 minute count into uh, the final 10 seconds that you'll hear on the webcast and uh, we'll launch uh, the vehicle. I understand you've been to all 19 previous New Shepard launches. I have, but I still haven't seen one because I've been in mission control for all of them. <laughs> well, having said that, what's your favorite part of New Shepard's 20th mission? I think that my favorite aspect of this mission is that we're 20 missions into the program. This is our fourth human flight on New Shepard, and it feels like space flight at Blue Origin is becoming routine. That's the dream here at Blue. There's one more special aspect to this flight, which is we're flying our, our very own Gary Lai as an astronaut, <laughs> and none of us can wait to hear from his lips what this space flight was like for him and how it's changed him. All of Team Blue is very excited to fly Gary Lai. Cannot wait for New Shepard's 20th mission. Yep.